Hi, everybody, and welcome to our July free training. Um, today, uh, the webinar is going to be run by uh, David, and we're going to be covering best practices for centralized email and ATC. He's going to be going over some um, best practices for email, showing you how to set it up, giving some tips and tricks. Um, and during this time, everybody will be on mute. Um, if you have a question, uh, you can either raise your hand or type it in the chat or Q&A boxes and we will get to all of those questions at the end. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to David and we can get started. Hi everybody, let me go ahead and share my screen here. So today I'm going to go over um, fast practices regarding email. And so the first thing that I wanted to talk about is you have the ability we have some new features in the email setup. One is you do have the ability to set up the email by company. If you have multiple companies in the system, that, that's a feature that came out about a year ago. And so I just want to talk about that as well. And then we also have a couple of new features in the mail setting in admin sending utility site options. One of them is the auto assign unfiled emails. And what this does is this looks at the email and It'll tell you if it looks at the front email, if that email just exists in one of the customers, in one of the companies, then it'll file it under that customer. Now, that email address exists in multiple companies, but in each company has its own um, separate email, it, it should file as well. But if that email address exists in multiple customers inside the same company, it will not auto file it because it won't know which one to put it to. So instead, it will put in the mail not filed. And I'll get into a little, a little, little more into that in, in a little bit. Um, the, the other thing you can do is, by request of one of our customers, you can set received emails with follow-up. So if you want to make sure, sometimes um, somebody looks at it real quick and doesn't mark it as unread, so you have the ability to set it as a follow-up as well to make sure that the user that that email that customer is assigned to is able to see that through the follow-up as well as the mail in that red tile. Now, for best practice, I, I, I have an email account set up here, one, one of our test Gmail accounts, and I send an email myself. And I say, can you please send me a copy of your statement? Can I get it? Chat. Oh, uh, Don, yeah, we'll uh, send you over uh, the phone number to call into uh, real quick. Okay, hold on one second, Don. So if I Go here, right? Yeah. Um, can you see our screen, Dawn, and see the number? I don't think she can see that. Now I'll have to give it to you too. Yeah. Well, one second, everybody. We're just getting the, the, the info out. See the Oh, you want to make that the panel? Oh. Um, yeah, you can click on it too. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, okay, we're going to send out the number and the meeting ID for anybody else who might have an issue with the audio being able to call in. Um, all right, so then we'll start off where we left off. So, yep. So, with the, um, for the, the email. So what I did is I sent an email to myself requesting a copy of the statement. And so when I replied to that email, I told them that I would send over a statement shortly and to pre-send all future correspondences to anytime collect heart gmail.com, which is the email address we have set up in our uh, training account. And so because in this, if you look at who it was to, it was to defrost at anytimecollect.com and I cc the email address we have. So the system is going to look at the from email address, seeing it being this EDB US email address, and see that it doesn't exist in any account. Then it's going to look at the two email, the first two email address, and look at the defrios at anytimecollect.com and find that email address is associated with a customer inside anytimecollect. 
And so if we go back into Anytime Collect and we go to our home screen. And you look at your mail not read. Well, see that my email has shown up now in the mail not read. And in once it loads here. We'll give it a second to load. So while that's loading, um, you also can look at the CC as well. So it looks at that the hierarchy is it there's an embedded message that you can't see in the email. It looks for that first. If not, in the two, if you send an email out of any time collect, in the subject of the email, there is a number. That number is what the system associates with that customer as well. If it doesn't find that, then, then looks at the from email address. If they can't find that, they look at the very first two email addresses. Now, if there are multiple two email addresses, it's only going to look at the first one. It's not going to look at the second one. And then same thing with the CC. Oh, there it is. So you'll see the CNC yes, the auto filed email. And we can click on my email here and be able to see that that was the incoming email of what I sent. So it, and it says auto filed email. So it allowed it to auto file under this because the D5 at any time class.com was that two email address. Now within this view, other things that you can do is you also have the ability to bulk update emails as read. So let's say these four emails, we don't necessarily need, need to see them anymore, or the, these three right here, and you can actually edit these emails, and you can mark them as read. So if you, if you check the box on the left, and then you check the box on the right, and click update, it's going to mark them as read. I guess we're having an issue here with this today. So sometimes when we run the Zoom meetings, it can make any time clock run a little bit slower. I've seen this sometimes on some of the trainings. So let me refresh here. Um, while, while we are refreshing, a couple other things that we've changed regarding emails are the email, it used to be that a user had to log in to any time clock for email retrieval to happen. It is now instantaneously. It, it comes in as long as whatever you have set in that limit in site options. In this case, in, in our training, we have set to 30 seconds. It will continue to go out and check for those emails. The other big change that we made was the, um, the, activity, the date and time on the email, on the activity is going to be the date and time the email was received by your email server. So if, you're, if you have a bunch of email that goes on at night, say you are worldwide and you have an, an Asian or a different you know, division that is CCing you on emails, then you'll be able to come in with a new way of Anytime Collect with the way that we're doing the, um, the new date and time stamp, is you'll be able to get it in, in real time of when it was actually received by your email server instead of necessarily when you logged into Anytime Collect and received it. Um, I'm just going to close out and go back in here. And let me go ahead and show you. Let me go ahead and show you the mail not read again. And show you how we can do that bulk update. So if you select these three, you have the ability to um, mark it as red and click update. And once it's done with the update, if we refresh the grid, those three will be gone. So it's one quick way where you can bulk update. You also have the ability to now within the um, invoice view, search off of the note section, which is going to be the body of the email. And you, you can also do that in the mail not filed. So if we go to our mail not filed view, 
we have a couple new new things on this one. So we have the ability to um, filter. If we go into our filter, we have the ability to um, filter off of the the from address, the send address, the subject, and be able to look off of that. And then we also have the ability to um, bulk assign. So if you knew that these um, these two Grace Phillips ones were associated with um, a specific customer, you can actually assign both of them at the same time to a new customer. So I know we we should have in our test data GMP. So if we do the Grace Phillips company, and we know that that's from that, you, you have the ability to bulk assign them. Because before, you would have to go in one by one and assign each email separately. And now you have the ability to, to do them all at once. And so when you do it, you get two, you get two, three actually different options. One is you can create them both under one single issue. That means if these emails were related to the same thing, you can update them to one single issue. If not, you can create them under multiple issues, which means that you can, they'll each have their own separate issue ID and be considered two separate issues. So if we go ahead and um, create multiple, and the third way is you can also assign it associated with an existing issue. So when you do that, it takes it and it and it creates two different two new issues under that Grace Grace and Phillips um, parent company, and you can then go back to your view here and continue down. Any, we'll go ahead and that's all I have for now. We'll go ahead and I know we have a couple of hands raised and some Q&A. Uh, we have another question from Trisha. She missed the first screen where you tell the system to assign auto time based on email address. So could we go back to that? Yep. I'll go back and show that. And then if we go ahead and if you want to go, it's an admin, same utilities, site options. I'm just going to reload here. So we're having issues with the with the Zoom meeting being with in, in any time collapse. I think I'm just going to copy and do a new URL and I'll show you what it is. Give it a second to load. Sometimes get you to the session at the end to so essentially create a brand new session. So now where we do that is admin sends the utilities and then site options. And then in site options, you can click in the mail settings. And that auto sign unfiled emails is right here in your mail settings. And also, um, I didn't mention it and I didn't show it, um, Bates button. If you go to admin, master of company, and if you edit one of your companies, this is where you could select a specific mail setting for that specific company as well. And we have some more questions. Uh, our next question is, there's some way to reduce the uh, USC column on the invoice page so I do not have to manually do it every time I pull up the invoices for a customer. So we do use the USD column on the invoice page. So if we go to, let, let's take a look at your question. You know, we might need to, we're, we'll go over you know, there and um, take a look at it. We might need you to just give us a little bit more guidance. Info of what you're looking for. Um, for the person who asked about accounts being assigned to people who are no longer with the company to reassign, um, that can be done through auto assignment at the at the user level. 
Um, if you don't have an audit time at the user level, we can um, walk you through how you can create a view to show which ones, who they're assigned to, and be able to mass update them to a different one. So in the, um, for the question regarding the USD column, in the currency, if the, in the currency ID, is that the column? Dina, are you asking? Is, the, is USD in the currency ID column? Because you do have the ability to hide columns as well um, and be able to hide them so that they're not shown. In the account, not the invoice. Oh, in the account view. Oh, in account detail? Is that what you're talking about? So if I look up a, and it's something that um, we can, if you want to send us an email, you can send um, myself an email or Grace, um, and we can more than welcome, happy to walk through with you a little more in detail. Uh, what, what it is you're actually looking for and be able to present to us and we can help you with a uh, fix for it. And then whoever was asking about the reassignment of the company as well, um, my email address is, I can put that on the screen and you can go ahead and shoot me an email and we can get it coordinated so that you can, um, so that you can do it. So. My email address is dfryoff at anytimecollect.com, and I can put that in the chat as well. For anybody who has questions, they, they can reach out. I go into the chat. I'll go ahead and enter in my email address. And we can go ahead and um, Help, help you with any questions you have. Any other questions that anybody else has? Anything else that um, you want to go over with the with what we talked about, or any questions outside of that? That it doesn't have to uh, strictly relate to the topic we talked about today. If you have any questions in general that you need answered. Um, we are here to help with some best practices or, or anything that you guys can help with. Yep. You have somebody in the chat. Is there, this is from Don, um, is there an ability to link my emails from Outlook to Cash Collect? Um, you really, the best way, as I showed it, um, if you're talking about your personal email address, no, we only, are doing one email address in the system, and best practice would be not to um, have that linked to it because if you open it up in Outlook before it gets retrieved into Anytime Collect, it will actually not it will not be retrieved in Anytime Collect if it's marked as red before ATC gets it. So best practice is to try to transition as as I showed here um, that the best practice is to try to transition into getting people to start emailing that email address you utilize in Anytime Collect instead and, and trying to steer them that way. And that's the way that we, we typically tell our customers to do it. And in fact, uh, we're actually doing the same thing internally as we're starting to use a version of Anytime Collect for that project management system. So we're kind of going through the same uh, transition as all of our clients are doing right now as well. Any other questions? Um, while we wait and see if we just have any more questions from anybody, um, just want to remind everyone that next week is our user group um, where you can get on and um, give opinions on the product and what you would like to see in the future, um, new features that you would like to see us add to the product. 
Um, it's your opportunity to take the floor and give feedback. So uh, I just want to remind everyone to join that um, as well. Um, I see we have another question um, in the question box. Um, yeah, this webinar will be available to view after we post all of our free training videos in our uh, knowledge base. Um, if you go into the knowledge base and you click on the videos icon, and then you uh, go on to the, the free training tab, every single free training that we've ever had is um, available there. Um, right now, David is showing you where you can find these in the uh, knowledge base. So yeah, if you come in here and then you go to, it's usually okay. into videos. And then there's this free training tab, and you can drill in um, under the see all 28 articles, um, and you can see every. Or drill into each one to be able to watch that video. I'm new. Is there a tutorial? There are a lot of tutorials out um, on the um, knowledge base. Um, David, do you mind going back to all videos? Yep. So if we go to videos here, and you've got um, tutorial videos here, as well as um, how-to videos and best practices. And then if you go back to Income Collect, you've got um, your feature articles, and then you can do page help and be able to look at articles based on specific pages as well. Okay, hey, glad that, um, yeah, we had a new question in Q&A. No, we're not. Yep, no, we're good. Um, and then, Jennifer, I'm glad you, if you, if you do have any questions, since you're new, feel free to reach out to your consultant or who's behind your project, and we'd be able to help you with that as well. Any other questions? All right, we'll let you all go um, early today. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of the week, um, and let us know if you have any questions that you think of after this. Yeah, because I did put my email address in the chat, so if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me, and either myself or somebody on Frontline would be able to help you with it. Thank you. All right, thank you.